1992, the first Mortal Kombat was released. Thanks to copious amounts of virtual gore, secrets, and cool ninjas, the edgy fighting game exploded in popularity and became an enduring series for years to come. When franchises like Street Fighter went on ice, Mortal Kombat endured. Now, with the reboot timeline complete with MK11, the time has come for a new game. I brought three contestants in to give their pitches for just that. Ladies and gentlemen, your souls are mine. This is Armchair Devs Mortal Kombat. Hello and welcome to Armchair Devs Mortal Kombat. I'm your host for this episode, KZ Excellent of KZExcellent.com, and I have three contestants here that are going to pitch their Mortal Kombat game. First up, we have Bob Video Games of Gigaboots.com. Hello. We also have Dr. Agro, who occasionally writes for Gigaboots.com, I guess. Uh, friendship. And Mr. Feel, our Twitter guy. I'm going to select the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> So how this show works, uh, I hear out three exciting pitches from these contestants. They go through, give us details through a variety of uh, segments, maybe some drawings involved, and we figure out who's the smartest person at making a pitch. I guess that's how that works. That might not be how that works, but uh, regardless, we're going to be opening here with the elevator pitch. Each of them will have 30 seconds to give me their elevator pitch for their game. And we are going to start with Bob. Bob will have 30 seconds as soon as they start speaking. Having completed his Ling Kuei training, Tomas Varda, or Varda returns to his homeland, the Czech Republic, to investigate disturbing rumors. Demonic alchemy has spread throughout Prague and needs to be, or he needs to get to the bottom of it, even if it means going to the bottom of the netherworld. Mortal Kombat Mythology Smoke Rises is a traversal heavy action game where you must use Smoke's ninja-like abilities to explore ancient cities, fight demons, and discover his past. Okay, that, <laughs> that's that's wonderful. Let me get that in here. You know, I was always looking forward to hearing more about Smoke. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna move on to Feel. Feel you have 30 seconds. It's a disaster. Johnny Cage's new movie, a biopic about himself, written, directed, and starred in by himself, has had its shooting schedule ruined by the Netherrealm and Outworld invading. At once! Engage in Mortal Kombat across 12 levels through the studios alone or with Johnny Cage's daughter Cassie to get shooting back on schedule and keep the head of the studio happy in Mortal Kombat, hell raised in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's wonderful. Good to hear. Our last contestant, Dr. Agro, you have 30 seconds to throw a knife at my eye. After millennia, the great dragon king Onaga has reemerged. Having forged an entirely new realm from his bestial might, he set his sights on conquest. In Mortal Kombat Primal Fury, a brand new action title from Midway Games, players will control heroes from a deadly alliance of Earthrealm, Netherrealm, and Outworld to claim the power primal and battle Onaga's undefeatable army of deathless were soldiers. It's time to test your bite. <laughs> 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 oh good well that's that's our elevator pitches i i i stopped seeing things for a moment needed to reset but uh now that we have a bit of an idea of it i'm gonna start asking questions to our contestants and i'm going to start with uh bob <laughs> okay all right, so your game is, if I wrote it down correctly, Mortal Kombat Mythology Smoke Rises? Yes. Okay. Uh, is this going to be uh, utilizing an, an, any FMV live action stuff like MK Mythology Sub-Zero? <gasps> there will be some, for sure. Ooh, all right, that's very important. Very, very short to the point. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dr. Agro. Yes, sir. Uh, how are you going to be dealing with, like, playing as, uh, your protagonist here? Is it going to be, like, an original thing, like some of the MK Conquest modes? Is it going to be familiar faces? Like, who do you 
who do you have at your disposal when you're playing through? Uh, we, we've actually got, you're going to be switching uh, between several characters during the course of this game. Uh, on the roster currently, we have uh, Johnny Cage uh, and his daughter Cassie, uh, Goro, Sub-Zero, Scorpion, uh, and Katana. Uh, this, this list was narrowed down from the entire roster uh, through a rigorous um, in-house employee popularity contest. <laughs> huh. By by that clearly Scorpion was number one. <laughs> uh Boone's favorite. Um Feel. Yes. Uh in Mortal Kombat Hell Raced in Hollywood, you described um uh battling uh the denizens of the various uh realms uh on, on movie sets, I believe. Yes. Uh can you describe some of the funny uh, sets that will be included. Maybe they're like direct references or just actual licenses because MK apparently can just do that. Uh, well, we do have one specific licensed level. It is the penultimate level. It is right before the final level. Uh, it is based on the Hellraiser franchise and the boss is Pinhead. Mm, oh. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we also have a level that is a giant beehive and the boss is Devora. Oh, mm, man. Uh, uh, I feel uh, mm, that that doesn't bode well. I don't feel there's any positive effects of Devor being in anything, but uh, we'll we'll have it in here. Can't 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 win them all. Uh, Doctor Agro. Mm hmm. Uh, tell me more about this power primal <laughs> that I've written down and already am trying to reject in my own brain. So the the power primal is uh a universal force that Onaga has sort of tapped into to, to create his new realm, the, uh, this primal realm of his. And it's, it, it, it's, it's a power that uh, you're, you're going to have to claim as your own in order to activate your character's uh, beast modes in which they take on both the abilities uh, and somewhat the appearance of uh, four different animal spirits uh, in order to, uh, both mix up and improve gameplay and, uh, well, it, uh, l oh, okay, let's face it, uh, Mortal Kombat has basically hit market saturation, uh, and we need to start <laughs> tapping into new demographics, and, you know, Sonic Fox has really given us an in, uh, to certain fan bases, cleaving into the fighting game community and we we really feel like we're in a position to capitalize on that maybe you are maybe you are in that position uh, bob i'm gonna move to you desperately sure to talk about mk mythology smoke rises uh, uh describe some of the gameplay for me like your general like you, your general like gameplay cycle uh it's a very like platform oriented like action game so we're going to be going through stages that are very vertical, have a lot of space to them. You kill enemies really quickly for normal enemies, but there are tougher ones you come or encounter. We're having this work done by Team Ninja, so it has almost a Ninja Gaiden 1 sort of feel to it, but even more movement options. Like you can turn to dust or a cloud of smoke and go through vents like in Infamous Second Sun and gain speed by different adjustments to the wind. Lots of intricate things around the like how you move in the environment okay that, that actually gave me quite a bit uh i like infamous second son i uh especially the evil ending is very funny and uh this environment stuff's interesting it's also nice to bring in a a development team with a good pedigree and something new for mortal Kombat since they've only really made fighting games for, for the past like two gens uh so all that's real good uh, let's see here. I think I'm supposed to ask Feel a question. So, let's see here. You know what? I'm interested in it. What's your last boss? I can't tell you yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Oh, 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 now I know why. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Um, shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, 
I was not, I was not, I was not ready for, 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 for my, for my contestant to tell me, fuck you. <laughs> it was not, was that not perfect me- counter. Was- <laughs> God, who's composing your game? Mick Gordon. <laughs> okay. That's like five points right there. All right. Good job. Okay. Well, I've asked everyone two questions, which means uh, this show's about to get a little bit worse. So, what I've done is tasked all three contestants with a drawing prompt. And for this one, it's only natural. They have to draw a combatant. So, they'll have to draw a uh, combatant that will appear in their game. And we are going to start with Feel. Okay, well... This is the final boss of my game. He is the <laughs> studio director who uh, doesn't like Johnny Cage and wants to cancel his his epic movie. <laughs> <laughs> studio director Noob Cybot. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like Johnny Cage's egotism and narcissism. He's very calm. Uh, he does yoga. <laughs> <laughs> he's a very new age type of studio head uh he he thinks he thinks movies need to be more like uh marvel movies and he's like no no nobody wants nobody wants your movie about kicking ass johnny cage <laughs> oh no <laughs> this is a straight upgrade for that for noob saibot <laughs> I'm so in, glad in, Noob Saibot found his center. <laughs> in, the, in this version uh he will be voiced by a heavily distorted ed boot <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Uh, probably a decent upgrade from his recent voice of Dr. Claw. <laughs> okay, we're going to aggro next. I'm going to need your combatant. All right. Uh, for my combatant, let me just pull this up here. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a... Uh, early on in the story, before you you claim the power primal for yourself... You, you need to send uh, one of your characters into this primal realm uh, on, a, on a forced stealth mission. Uh, the, the natural choice for, choice for this, of course, being Goro. So he has to disguise himself uh, in order to sneak oh his God. way oh, no. <laughs> past the wear army. Oh, that's so great! Oh, that's good! Oh, I'm really looking forward to seeing that in your game, MK Primal Fury, the action title developed by a studio that's gone. Oh, um, yeah, actually, we've uh, we've created a new studio, uh, a subsidiary of NetherRealm Midway Games, but James <laughs> is spelled with a Z. Uh, okay, I, I, that's the most important note here. <sighs> this is awful. <laughs> you know it isn't you know it isn't awful what, what's that uh your drawing i assume so i'm gonna need you to throw me your combatant bob okay let's see okay here she is <laughs> <laughs> this is this is uh my new combatant samantha miller whip crack the cia <laughs> assassin sent to kill the prime minister of czech the czech republic She's got a photo of uh, the Prime Minister shaking hands with Tuan Chi. (laughs) (laughs) As you can see, her arm, like, unravels into, like, many whips. (laughs) It's important. I'm not even kidding. I'm 100% into this. (laughs) Do do you you understand what's killing me about... You said there'd be FMV, so I'm imagining a live-action scene of Quan Chi shaking hands with a Prime Minister character, and I'm gonna die. Yeah, that's the primary reason I wanted Quan Chi in my game. <laughs> <laughs> this this is what's called appealing to the to the host. <laughs> okay, well, I've, I've now seen the artistic mastery of our three contestants. I am now going to ask each of you for one thing that you haven't had a chance to say yet. Because my questions are typically uh, like a 2 out of 10. Can't always hit the things you really want. So, Dr. Agro, you can say anything about your game. Anything at all. Uh, one thing I really want to put forward as a, uh, as, as a feature in our game is, is the amount of care 
uh, and resources we are putting into our extensive photo mode. Um, <laughs> with, with with the power of the PS5, when when you activate the photo mode, it basically deloads everything else in the level except for like the ten feet around your character and up reses the entire game to eight K. Uh, <laughs> it also loads in a, a suite of uh, switchable costumes that, that we have worked out to, uh, you know, animate uh, in any conceivable situation your character could be in, along with different lighting modes, the uh, presence or absence of moisture in the air, uh, a selectable series of bath and shower fixtures, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, as, as well as uh, VR support uh, for the photo mode alone. Oh, no. <sighs> that uh, is the most I've had to type for your pitch so far. Uh, and that's good. You know, I always reflect uh, fondly on games with solid photo modes like Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, you know, I even like that recent like Bowser's Fury game that came out where they're like, okay, we'll make the game actually look good now when you enter this mode only. And I'm like, oh, this looks nice. Bunch of stuff we can do here. And seeing you take the next step, Midway Games with a Z with the definitive photo mode in a game, just sounds exciting. <laughs> when have I ever wanted to look at anything that is 11 feet away? Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> All right, Phil, it's your turn. <laughs> uh, my game is a 3D beat 'em up. It's like a more refined version of Shaolin Monks. Uh, all over some stages in the background, there will be posters that say Shaolin Monks HD coming soon, but there are no plans to ever release such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good to see that Ed Boon is really going hands on on this game <laughs> in terms of its <laughs> environmental storytelling of his Twitter account. Wonderful. We're going to move on uh, to Bob. Anything you want to tell me about uh, MK Mythology Smoke Rises? Uh, I want to tell you about my DLC plan. Oh, sure. We're going to cross over with some hyper-violent anime because that's uh -oh. in the nature of this. Uh-oh. Okay. Sure. So, so we got Ninja Scroll. We got this in North Star. And then for new stuff, we got Attack on Titan and some cl other classics. We're going to have Kite. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Uh, you see, it's the show where they shoot people in the head, and then the, the second later, the, the explosion goes off, and it blows up their head, because uh, they shot a bomb into their head. Yeah. What, what about Elfin Lead? <laughs> and, and a comic a kill. Like, like what about those? Uh, uh, and unfortunately, no. They, they weren't the right kind of hyper-violence for us. Ah, okay. <laughs> Makes sense. Reasonable. You always need to have limits. <laughs> All right, I've, I've let you guys have a custom-made uh, gun. You've said whatever, whatever you wish that I haven't asked you. Now you have even more opportunities because you each get to ask uh, your opponents a couple of questions. Bob will go first. Get to ask the other two two questions. Dr. Ergo? Uh, yes, sir. After you get your primal form... Mm -hmm. Will it say animality every time you kill someone? <laughs> that would be uh, ridiculous and annoying. Um, there, there, there's only a verbal cue uh, when you defeat a boss or a mini boss while in beast form. And that tag is bestiality. Can we change that? <laughs> it's a beast form. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. I wish I had They're not animal them. forms, Bob. I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right, Bob, you you stepped on a landmine once. Let's see if you can do it again. <laughs> I know. Okay, uh, feel. Yes. Can you run me through what the, like, what features does your combat have? Like, what, is there any sort of special meters or anything we're building uh, up? There is. You have light attack, heavy attack, jump, grab, and uh, you have a special button that you hold the special button and you can hit other buttons and it'll do like a, uh, Johnny Cage's shadow ball or a shadow kick where he flies across the screen. Um, you can also pick up items and you have a special fatality meter that fills up and will let you instantly kill an enemy with a, a brief fatality. Uh, we're saving the big animations for the bosses. All right. Sounds cool. <laughs> All right. Got a little bit more information off that. I guess we'll have feel go next. 
Okay. Bob. Uh-huh. Uh, are there any other Mortal Kombat characters in your game? You know, like Kano and the, the Dragon Gang or whatever the fuck he runs? Yes, you you will be facing Kano and his Black Dragons. They have a like an outlet. What do you a branch in the Czech Republic? I was like an outlet store. That's not right. <laughs> uh, is one of the Black Dragon retail location by an iPod. <laughs> and this actually takes place earlier in the timeline, so you uh, have a partner with you late in the game. It's like something we keep hidden super well in the marketing. You get to fight with Tundra, the or the second Sub Zero before he becomes that, and you uh, fight a ton of other dudes uh, from various parts of the, the lore. Like, of course, Quan Chi, as we've been over, Raiden shows up, but he doesn't have powers. And uh, we'll also have mm. Natara, a vampire you they haven't used in years. <laughs> <laughs> And anytime someone pulls from what I can only remember is maybe the PS2 games is a good idea. Yeah, they're When's all so Dramen bad. showing up? <laughs> Wait, which one? Dramen. <sighs> <laughs> We're not bringing him up. I didn't have time to write him in. <laughs> you, maybe no one even time. had time to remember him. I only just remembered him. <laughs> I haven't written down my list of characters, okay? But I'm sorry. Okay. Chameleon, Chameleon was more important to get in. Uh, one spelled was a K, one spelled was a C. What about mocap? <laughs> <sighs> no, that's that was a little bit too light. We were considered it as an alternate costume, like after you beat the game, but we didn't get it in there. Oh, that's tragic. Okay, aggro. Uh huh. Tell me about additional monetization in your game, be it DLC, uh, selling packs of c**ts or whatever. <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse you. <laughs> well, uh, to start with, um, you you've got. Uh, uh, as I said before, your four base animal forms, uh, wolf, bear, leopard, and otter. Um, we're, we're going to be having both piecemeal and season passes. Uh, uh, more animal forms come up, uh, uh, in, including, uh, wombat, minx, gator, catfish, uh, and chinchilla for the first set. Um, we, we also have several different extensions for the photo mode, uh, in, in including, uh, deepening our suite of VR tools to include uh, uh, PlayStation Move supported body paint, um, uh, as as well as a, uh, a a subscription service uh, for the community, where you can in game uh, using uh, its proprietary client stream your photo mode to other paying clients. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, sounds good. This is my this is my favorite part because Agro can't say anything about his game if he has to ask other people about their games. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Feel. Yes. Uh, so so your game seems to be set in Hollywood. <laughs> no, that's right. Uh, <laughs> I and, and it sounds like several uh, uh of our associates would like to know in, in what way does this game address uh, the current <laughs> rampant culture of sexual abuse going on in Tinseltown. Oh, uh, well, at various points in the game, you will uh, be able to pick up newspapers that'll give you very quick, uh, like, glances that will say things like, um, like, striker removed from the force for sexual misconduct. And uh, uh, when, when Noob Cybot, when you're fighting him at the end of the game, he will list off starlets that uh, currently have things they would like to say to Johnny Cage and he will be very upset that he has to deal with all of Johnny Cage's bullshit and his toxic masculinity. But, and and then Johnny Cage will rip his head off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, two steps forward, one step sideways. We, we could deal with that. <laughs> Bob video games. What's up? I've heard a lot uh, about the stuff that that is in your game, but uh, what I'd really like to hear about uh, is are the places that your game is, uh, specifically the city of Prague. Mm -hmm. You've you've got a lot of uh, ninjas and and violence and uh, animes that might actually be hentai's that were re-edited into violent OVAs. Mm -hmm. 
So, so I'd like to know how you balance that. Uh, tell, tell me a little bit about how the city of Prague is presented, how, how you curate its, its historic and cultural importance on the world stage. Uh, like what, what kind of research went into it and how does that come out in your game? Oh, we of course sent people over there to get tons and tons of pictures. We're going to present the city itself in a positive light and all the people of it. It's just a cor one, a corrupt official in a bunch of strange happenings that have been going on and uh, evil cults that have uh, infested it, and you're trying to get them out. So the city itself is in a good light, just not the, uh, the darker underside. I just wanted to hear you say it. I wanted to hear what it would sound like, because I'm going to be hearing it for the next six months. <laughs> uh, I have no further questions. All right, we've had the contestants grill each other, and... Uh... We're reaching the climax of this show. So what I'm going to need for each of my contestants is a final statement. They can try to sell me one more time on their game or attempt to make me not buy the other ones. They'll be given 30 seconds and we're going to start with aggro. Furries are one of the most organized and untapped markets in video games future. They spend more money than most civilized nations in a year. Also, my project is the only one that spins off this game to a subsidiary company, so if it fucks up, who cares? That's not on Netherrealm. Also, nobody likes Prague. <sighs> oh, no. Whoa! <laughs> okay, okay, thank you, Dr. Agro, for a very strong argument. Uh, given that you shot one of the other contestants, I'll let them, uh, I'll let them go next. Bob, you have 30 seconds from when you start speaking. Mortal Kombat's catalog really needs to diversify, and I think that this is the next big thing. We want to see more about the past of the of the franchise, more about these characters everyone knows, especially Smoke. He's so cool. <laughs> and there's, did I mention there's a soundtrack by the RZA? <laughs> <Whoa>! <laughs> okay, thank you, Bob. I feel like I need to protect my neck. I do it all for the nookie uh, feel. You're up. 30 seconds. Sonya Blade is a secret character in this game. She's voiced by Microsoft Sam and says things like, Sandy Hook was real, and I do not believe vaccinations cause autism. Also, Agro's game would fail because he will not go far enough to sell to furries. Bold. Agro is not brave enough to have a diaper DLC. Are you brave enough, Agro? <laughs> I mean, if, if, if you want to talk about the secret Quan Chi level, but I didn't really want that to be public knowledge. <laughs> uh, well, tragically, we, there's no place for us to actually throw that in, so it must be stricken from the record. Those are your final statements. I need some time to drink <laughs> and review all of these notes and maybe burn them. And then maybe I'll come back with some feedback and a winner. So let's do that. Okay, so I've reviewed my notes here to offer some feedback to my contestants. Uh, starting with Feel, Mortal Kombat Hell Raised in Hollywood is a wonderful name. <laughs> I, 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 I like using Hellraiser as a licensed level. I think that's good. Some untapped potential there. Uh, 4K Pinhead would be great. Um, not, not a big fan of Devorah and whatever bug things would happen there. Uh, but you have Mick Gordon. I think Big Gordon could make like a really good soundtrack using actual bees in it. Just like he <laughs> uses a lawnmower uh, in the Doom soundtrack. Uh, 3D beat em ups are cool. So Shaolin Monks uh, making more people mad at Ed Boon is always a plus. <laughs> and no one likes Striker. So having an Easter egg saying that he got owned off screen is pretty good. Moving on to Dr. Agro. Mm -hmm. Once again, I, I look at these notes and go, who has the most written here? That would be you. Uh, mm, content value. Uh, yes. Uh, number one, love Onaga. Onaga rules. <laughs> Hell yeah. So I was immediately engaged from, from the jump. Uh, MK Primal Fury 
interesting title. Uh, also interesting bringing back a midway. Um, in general, I think it's a good idea to maybe like farm things out to other studios and make sure that the main brand, the main development studio stays spotless so you can do the horrors that you have put here today. Um, mechanically, this sounds cool. Uh, the photo mode seems innovative. And there's a lot of really good monetization here that it's like, this could make us a lot of money. Uh, but also, I'm... I'm um, Bob! <laughs> What's up? <laughs> MK Mythology Smoke Rises feels built for me in some ways. Live action FMV, Quan Chi meeting with prime ministers, <laughs> uh, anime crossovers with things that I was uh, uh, too young to have seen. Uh, that's great. Um, uh, location shooting and all the mobility stuff and the verticality and the platforming stuff with Team Ninja actually sounds like a solid game. It's now that I've uh, reflected upon all of these that I need to I need to pick one of them. Sadly, I have to pick a winner. The winner for this episode of Armchair Devs is. Dr. Agro. Yes! Oh, I fucking knew it! I, 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 I look at all of my notes here, I look at how you've sold this game, and I go, you have farmed out a Mortal Kombat spinoff game Ooh. to a completely other studio, and this spinoff, in its first six months, will sell 10 million units. And <laughs> what I see is big money. Big money from the richest people on this earth. I'm imagining the art that comes from it, I am imagining the monetization scheme and the most nightmarish press cycle I've ever seen. You're the winner. Oh, man. Can you imagine what it would have felt like to have done that and not won? Christ. <laughs> it is incredibly <laughs> fucked up because your game from a gameplay of level sounds like the worst one of the three by five points. Most likely, yeah. <laughs> I'm not in the business of getting a good game here. Uh... <laughs> We're owned by big companies. We want that money. I would like to thank my uh, contestants for participating. And thank you, the audience, for watching this episode of Armchair Devs. Thank you for listening to this episode of Armchair Devs. Podcasts like this and Big Think Dimension are only possible with viewer support. If you'd like to help us in the fight for good content, please show us your support over on patreon.com slash GB podcasts, where you can also listen to the extended pitches that couldn't make it into this episode.